Hello friends, welcome back to a new video that is MCQs on Immunology and this is the part 3 of this series of videos on Immunology. So let's start the question answer session on Immunology and the first question of this video that is question number 41. Most abundant immunoglobulin is option A IgA, option B IgE, option C IgG or option D IgM. So, which one is the most abundant immunoglobulin and the right answer is option C that is IgG. So, IgG antibody or immunoglobulin is the most abundant in our body. So, let us move on to question number 42 that is immunoglobulin that increases in number during allergy is option A IgA, option B IgE, option C IgG or option D IgM. So, immunoglobulin that increases in number during allergy reaction is option B that is IgE antibody <coughs> increases in number during allergy reaction. Okay. Next question they can get. Next is question number 43 that is events in body defense against infection is option A inflammation then chemotaxis then diapidesis then phagocytosis and at the end digestion so which one is the correct sequence of defense against infection after infection what uh, are done what will be uh, <coughs> performed in the uh, defense mechanism so first one then second option option b is at first inflammation then diapidesis then chemotaxis then phagocytosis and digestion option c digestion diapidesis phagocytosis chemotaxis and inflammation and option d diapidesis chemotaxis digestion phagocytosis and at the last inflammation so which one is the current correct answer about the events in body defense against infection and the right one is option a that is at first the inflammation then chemotaxis then diapidesis then phagocytosis and at the end digestion okay so this is the question number 43 let's move on to question number 44 so which of the following is true for lymphocytes and the options are option a specificity and diversity option b memory option c self and non-self recognition and option d all of the above so which one is correct about or true about lymphocytes and the right one is option d that is all of the above are correct about lymphocytes so lymphocytes are the immune cells which recognize the uh, <coughs> infection causing organisms or pathogens by specifically and they can divert uh, they have diversity to react with different uh, different uh, infections and they have memory b cells which can recognize the previously infected organisms and also they have self and non self recognition they can recognize their body's own cells and the uh, <coughs> outward infect infectory cells okay so these are all characteristics of lymphocytes so let's move on to question number 45 that is immunoglobulins have been named so because of the presence of option a alpha globulin option b beta globulins option c gamma globulins or option d epsilon globulin so which one is correct one about the immunoglobulins have been named so because of the presence of option c that is gamma globulin so presence of gamma globulin that's why it is called immunoglobulins okay so let's move on to question number 46 that is cdr determines the option a antibody specificity option b antibody structure option c shape of antigen or option d it is an unrelated term so which one is correct about cdr and the right one is option a that is antibody specificity so cdr determines the antibody specificity so now what is cdr so cdr means complementarity de uh, determining region or uh, hyper variable immunoglobulin domain that confines specific antibody binding 
they are part of the variable chain of antibodies with b cell and t cell receptors these molecules bind to their distinct antigens okay so ctr molecules are hyper variable immunoglobulin domain okay so next question dekhenge next is the total number of amino acids found in h and l chain that means heavy and light chain of antibody is option a 200 for heavy chain and 400 amino acid for light chain or option b 214 and 446 option c 191 and 214 and option d 250 and 500 so which one is the correct one about the total number of amino acids found in heavy chain and light chain of antibody and the right one is option b that is 214 214 and 446 amino acid we will get in the total uh, number of amino acids found in heavy chain and light chain okay so in light chain that is 214 and in heavy chain that is 446 so it is <coughs> opposite way okay so next one is question number 48 that is the allotypic site in the l chain that determines the structural difference of kappa and lambda chains lie at option a 150th option b 170th option c 190th or option d that is 191th amino acid so which one is the right one that is option d that is 191th amino acid so the allotypic site in the l chain that determines the structural difference of kappa and lambda chain lie at 191th amino acid now we will see what is the kappa and lambda chain so kappa and lambda are two types of light chains present in antibody that are produced in humans so two types of <coughs> light chains are kappa and lambda so here this one is the heavy chain and these are the light chains of antibodies so this light chains can be two types that is kappa chain kappa light chain or that can be uh, lambda light chain okay so this is the question and let's move on to question number 49 that is kappa chain can be distinguished on the basis of option a leucine or valine in place of lysine or arginine at allotypic site option b lysine or arginine in the place of leucine or valine option c arginine in place of leucine or option d lysine in place of valine so which one is correct about kappa chain the kappa chain can be distinguished on the basis of which one that is option a so kappa chain can be distinguished on the basis of leucine or valine in place of lysine or arginine at allotypic site okay next is uh, and also here this uh, allotype means an allotype is a variation in immunoglobulins or antibodies that can be found in antibody classes so the word allotype comes from the greek word allo means other or differing from the norm and typhos meaning mark okay so an allotype is a variation in immunoglobulins that uh, that can be found in antibody classes okay so next is question number 50 that is in human beings option a 40 percent of l chains or light chains are kappa type option b 60 percent of l chains are kappa type or option c 60 percent of l chains are x type or option d none of the above so which one is the correct about the light chain percentage of kappa in human being and the right one is option b that is 60 percent of light chains are kappa type so in human beings 60 percent of light chains are kappa type okay so next one is question number 51 that is peptides that bind to mhc proteins are known as option a agritopes option b epitopes option c isotopes or option d cytotoxic cells so peptides that bind to mhc protein are known as option a that is agritope so what is agritope agritope is an agritope is in the 
is the part of a processed antigen that binds to the MHC molecule and is exposed to T cells. The agritope is the face of the T cell epitope that binds into the MHC binding cleft. Okay, and an epitope here also the epitope is present. So an epitope is the part of an antigen that is recognized by the immune system. So epitopes are also known as antigenic determinants. The immune system recognizes epitope through antibodies B cells or T cells. Okay. So clear that is the agritope and epitope difference. So let's move on to question number 52. That is the examples of lymph lymphokines are option A interleukin 2 and macrophage chemotactic factor. Option B interleukin 3 and gamma interferons. Option C colony stimulating factor or option D all of this. So which one is the example of lymphokines and the right answer is option D that is all of these are the examples of lymphokines that is interleukin 2, macrophage chemotactic factor, interleukin 3, gamma interferon, colony stimulating factor all are lymphokines okay. And these lymphokines are a type of cytokine that are produced by lymphocytes. So lymphokines are synthesized mainly by T cells. They regulate the activation, growth and differentiation of many cell types, most notably T cells and B cells. Okay. So next is question number 53. CD4 plus uh, CD4, uh, CD4, a surface antigen commonly found in T helper cell, which is a option A glycoprotein, option B nucleoprotein, option C phospholipid or option D polysaccharide. So which one is correct about the CD4 surface antigen and the right one is option A that is glycoprotein. So CD4 plus surface antigen which is found mainly on T helper cells that are the glycoprotein. Okay. So next one is question number 54 that is AZT that is azidothymine is an option A biocatalyst option B antibiotic, option C anti drug, anti AIDS drug or option D anabolic hormone. So which one is correct about azidothymine? So the right answer is option C that is it is a anti AIDS drug. Okay. So next one is question number 55 that is which of the following are autoimmune diseases and the options are option A Hashimoto disease, option B uh, God Pastor syndrome, God Pastor syndrome or option C Graves disease or option D all of the above. So which one is autoimmune disease here and the right one is option D that is all of the above are <coughs> examples of autoimmune disease. So the next one is question number 56 that is antibodies are produced against cells RBC membrane protein in option A Addison's disease. Option B, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Option C, leukemia. Or option D, myocardial infraction. So the right answer is option B. That is autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So antibodies are produced against cells RBC membrane protein in autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Okay. So the next question is question number 57. That is antigens can be soluble or particulate, natural or artificial and may or may not be thymus dependent, choose the correct answer. So option A that is statement is incorrect, option B it is partially true, option C it is impossible or option D it is true. So which one is correct about this statement? So the right answer is option D that is it is true. So antigens can be soluble or particulate they can antigens can be natural or artificial or they are they may or may not be thymus dependent okay so let's move on to question number 58 that is igg is 150 kilodalton and can be proteolytically cleaved into two subunits of 100 kilodalton and 50 kilodalton so this was proved by option a rodney porter and gerald Edelman or option B Robin 
वैलेंटाइन और ऑप्शन सी ब्रूस एल्बर्ट और ऑप्शन डी हॉफमैन सो विच वन इज करेक्ट द करेक्ट वन इज ऑप्शन ए दैट इज रॉडनी पॉर्टर एंड जेरल्ड एडलमैन सो आई जी जी इज 150 kilo dalton and can be proteolytically cleaved into two subunits that is 100 kilo dalton and 50 kilo dalton that is the heavy chain and light chain and this was proved by rodney porter and gerald edelman okay so the next question is question number 59 and that is hiv cause a complete breakdown of immune system by option a binding to t cells and destroying them option b binding to b cells and destroying them option c binding to t4 lymphocyte through cd4 plus antigen and destroying them or option d that is destroying b cells and t cells t cells uh, to immune system cells of the immune system so which one is correct and the right answer is option c that is binding to t4 lymphocyte through cd4 plus antigen and destroying them so hiv causes a complete breakdown of immune system by binding to t4 lymphocyte through cd4 plus antigen and destroying them so the last question of this video that is question number 60 that is night sweats sudden weight loss and susceptibility to common disease are the primary symptoms of option a aids option b hepatitis option c dengue or option d cancer so which one is the symptoms of uh, which one is the night sweat sudden weight loss and susceptibility to common diseases are the primary symptoms of option a that is aids these are the symptoms of aids okay these are all 20 questions of this part 3 video on immunology so thank you for watching this video